Hello, world. Um, I'm Phoenix Harry, the founder of Co Liberation Foundation and Dozen Eyes Games. Um, how do I advance the slides? <laughs> I thought you guys would just do it. Um, and I'm not sure these are the right slides, um, but if not, I'll advance through. Um, so, <clears throat> let me see. Is that going to work? Maybe. Maybe not. Okay. All right. Uh, women make up a mere 4% of game programmers. Uh, women make up around 25% of programmers overall. And you might th be thinking, this isn't so bad, right? Well, wrong. The truth is now it's worse than it's ever been before. Um, this is the field of computing since 1991, and the numbers have been falling every year. And if you look at just the number of programmers and not the whole field, it's worse. In 1987, 42% of American programmers were women. Women have a long history of making significant field, uh, contributions to the field of computers. Uh, the field of computing. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just got some really horrific news right before this talk. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm a little nervous. Uh, women programmed almost all of the early, earliest computers as part of the war effort. In fact, uh, the idea of being a compute her was even a concept, and it was what they called women who um, did computing in the 50s and 60s. Um, this is, I'm sorry. Um, it's not taking. OK. Uh, because it w became associated with typing and secretarial duties, programming was even considered women's work. Um, this is the April 1967 issue of Cosmopolitan magazine. And this is a lady that they featured. And she said, if it doesn't sound like women's work, well, it just is. So there was this impression that computing was something women did. And it was an industry they should go into. Um, so why the dramatic switch? Uh, and I did some research on this, and what I found is it's the personal computer and all the advertising that went right along with it. It was an expensive item, and so to sell these things, they targeted men, um, family breadwinners, who they saw as the economic uh, demographic. And they had to create the impression in culture that computers were not for women. Um, here are some of the earliest ads. You'll notice that we have uh, Apple, we have Commodore, and all of these other ads that are starting to re-gear and reshift the opinion of the population. Um, Sin uh, Sinclair, the TRS-80, and then Apple ran this whole series of ads that compared owning a computer to being a founding father of the digital age. And all of these ads featured men. Um, You'll see then they started taking this kind of turn, which I found really disturbing. Uh, don't feel bad. Our servers won't go down on you either. <laughs> I don't even know how that ran. Um, and so this advertising tactic, unfortunately, was very successful. And men started buying computers. And when they brought out console gaming, it ramped up to an extreme. And they targeted these consoles at little boys and men. And they, the ads kind of became either male-dominated or really disturbingly misogynistic. So uh, here's one I remember when he couldn't keep his hands off me. Uh, game boy more fun than a ferret down your trousers. Um, this one, uh, take advantage with Davis. Uh, this one is really disturbing. This one is just an out-and-out -out rape reference of Game Boy. Another Game Boy one. Game Boy was the worst offender. Uh, but I didn't even really have to try this hard. Um, let me see. I'm sorry. Okay, so Sega Saturn. Um, there's, uh, you may not have noticed there's a naked woman on this page. This is to sell a processor. I'm not even sure why. Um, these ads were really offensive. Game Boy ran a whole series of ads that uh, showed men as too busy or preoccupied playing their game to deal with their girlfriends. This woman's in prison. This woman's crying. Uh, they just, at, at some point, just gave up and just started shoving it into the guy's pants. Um, I think that was an option for them. Uh, this is a game that came out. She really wants it. I, I, I don't even know how they got through this. And the problem with this is women make up over half 
of all gamers now. And these are the ads that little girls growing up in the 70s, 80s, and 90s saw. And it created this sort of systemic problem. And it discouraged women, I think, from going into the field. And it's, I think it's a big symptom of why you see that, that arc downward. Um, and game comp companies and technologies just simply have not retargeted their advertising to the truth of the demographics. This is the GTA 5 um, ad that just ran. Uh, Dell, easy on the eyes. Uh, go big or go home, this came out last year. Um, and you'll just see, this is the PS Vita. I made a, a game for this console and I was wondering why I was getting such a reaction and then I looked at their advertising and I was like, oh, this is, this is great. Um, <laughs> and it, this tactic just creates this culture of misogyny in tech and in games. And we don't have a STEM problem, we have an image problem. How do we fix it? We undo the damage. We woman up. So this is my organization called Code Liberation Foundation that teaches women to program games for free. And this part of the talk, I'm gonna, the slides are a little wrong. So we build healthy uh, communities of female developers and we help each other learn and create. And we give each other free uh, game development classes, both online and in person. We meet and play and we talk about games. And we just started our second year. And we've run over 200 hours of free game development classes and taught over 1,000 women between the ages of 16 and 60 to program this last year. Um, we've also done game jams, game events, and we've done a lot to create a sense of community and build up an industry that really mentors and raises women. Um, and this, these are some slides from our first Lady Jam, and we had uh, four teams go from zero to game in 48 hours, and these teams had little or no exposure, and we did a, a boot camp C++ class before the, uh, before the game jam, it was packed. And we had, this is one of the women who helped teach this class, and we had four great games come out at the end, and they were fantastic examples of the kinds of possibilities. This is a therapy session. This is a fun platformer where you play a llama and you play with wool. Um, this is a floating balloon game where you avoid sharp objects. Uh, and I really was proud of the girls who made these games. And so my question, and your question might be, like, what are some of the things we can do to encourage women to enter the field? And I think it's really important to stand up and be counted if you're a woman. And I think it's important you speak publicly about your experiences. And I really encourage you to mentor, mentor, and mentor. And no one's going to kind of say, hey, we need more women in games, or hey, we need more women in hardware, and make that happen. You have to make these opportunities. The people in this room are making these opportunities right now. You need to host game jams, hackathons, speaking events. If you get offered a speaking event, a job, or an interview, ask yourself, is there a younger woman in my field I could give this to who might need it a little bit more? And if the answer is yes, just play it forward. Uh, for every opportunity that the uni universe deals your way, make two for another woman in your field. Um, you're more powerful than you realize. And you can pick a few talented women and you can really build them up. And these are the three women that I've mentored over the last year. And I've watched them become leaders. And this is Jane Friedhoff. Uh, she just received a no quarter commission. Her new game, uh, Slam City Oracles, was on the cover of Otaku Australia. I watched her become the creative technologist at the New York Times. Um, and, and this is a woman I couldn't even get to talk publicly a year ago. And she just needed a community to support her and she flourished. Uh, this is Nina Freeman. She uh, is just finishing up a title that she made with girls she met at Code Liberation Foundation, and it's up for one of the largest awards you can get in indie games. Uh, it's up for the Game of the Year Indiecade. And also, she was featured in Nylon Magazine for her work with Code Liberation Foundation, and she got hired as a developer at Kickstarter this year. This is Kat Small. Um, she's managed to catch the attention of the community in gaming, and she got featured in a new movie called uh, Game Loading. In fact, I like threw the, I threw her in front of the camera for this one. Um, I hope she forgives me. <laughs> but uh, she's continuing to release like new and innovative titles, and she just launched her own game studio called Brooklyn, uh, called Brooklyn Gamery. Um, and basically, after a year, now these women are men mentors and leaders in, in the field, and I can kind of step back and let them bring up another round and another round. Um, so all you need to really do is believe in the young women around you, and they will just flourish. 
because game development can look like this. Uh, join us and uh, ah, ah. <laughs> codeliberation.org at codeliberation. Thank you.